Gabriella here in Douglas, who is the natural history curator of the Museum of Riverside. Mm -hmm. And joining us today is a mammoth molar. Yes, this is the molar, the lower molar of a Colombian mammoth, a species of uh, elephant that lived here in Riverside, actually throughout all of Southern California, even all the way down to Costa Rica. They were very widespread in most of the southern U.S. up until about 12,000 years ago when they became extinct. Wow, well, I have to say, out of all the in the vaults, this one's, this one's pretty cool. So tell us kind of how the, um, the structure is of this. I mean, just looking at it naked eye, not knowing much, you mm -hmm. know, obviously not as much as you, kind of looks like there's almost like some glazing, like some curvature, like what's all that going on over there? Yeah, it almost looks like the bottom of an old school tennis shoe. Yeah. Uh, but this is a, a single tooth, a single molar, and it has two components to it that are important. So what look like the white squiggles here is the enamel. Uh -huh. Same type of enamel we have on our teeth, it's the hardest substance in the body. Okay. Between the enamel is another type of tissue from the teeth uh, that's called dentin that's a little bit softer. So when these chew, the dentin wears away at a faster rate than the enamel does because the enamel's stronger. Right. Why that is important is it because you could feel these ridges are kind of sharp. Hmm. And so when one tooth is grinding against the upper tooth, it acts as a way to chop and grind the food. And so as it's chopping and grinding, it's wearing away the enamel at a lower rate than the dentin, and it's basically keeping those teeth sharp. Wow. The problem is that they wear these down at a pretty fast rate, and they have a few replacement teeth in their lifetime. So when this gets worn down, the teeth move forward. Unlike our teeth, yeah. where they grow and they fall out, you put them under the pillow and get the money from the tooth fairy. Uh, these grow up and forward. So as they're growing and eating throughout their lifetime, it'll grow up and forward and eventually there'll be just a little nub at the end and that will fall out. But fortunately there'll be another molar tooth behind that. They have a finite number of molars and what happens is when they are old and lose that last tooth, they starve to death. That's the, the sad part because oh they God. no longer have the ability to chew up their food. Yeah, wow. So obviously without touching it or picking it up, but it appears so heavy. How it is very heavy, very dense and very heavy. Yeah. Because they're putting a lot of pressure when they're chewing up their food and their food sometimes can be grass that's soft, but oftentimes it might be branches and sure. twigs, you know, very, very coarse material. So they're putting a lot of force on that and to grind it up. So having this nice, thick, very dense tooth is a great way to grind up the food inside your mouth and they can go through hundreds of pounds of food in a single day. Wow, that's incredible. So it's funny, you know, modern day Riverside and Riverside County as a whole, we, we picture it as a city and mm -hmm. we kind of, at least for me, forget the history, especially something like that. We had thousand pound mammoths walking around. It's like- Oh, several tons of Yeah, it's of, crazy. Of mammoths. So is that from here in Riverside? That's obviously. from here in Riverside. Yeah. And this goes back to a time that we call the Ice Age. And when people think about the Ice Age, you would think about ice, of course. But in Riverside, we didn't have the big ice sheets that you would have in the Midwest. Most of the cold was really, say, north of Oregon. So Riverside, 15, 20,000 years ago, was very similar to how it is now. Yeah. Um, but during that time, we had all of the different animals that we have today. So all of the deer and the coyotes and the bobcats, grizzly bears, pronghorn antelope. In addition to that, we had a whole another upper level of mammals that we call the megafauna. So uh, these large mammals, in this case, uh, the Colombian mammoth, its distant relative, the mastodon, another elephant-like animal. There were giant camels, giant bison, uh, giant bears, um, and they eventually all went extinct. But that megafauna is um, really iconic, and we find fossils of those megafauna all throughout um, California, not just in Riverside. Hmm. But to think about what Riverside was like historically, you go back you know, to the Spanish era and, and the era of the native peoples, and you go back even further and you have this period of time when it looked more like Africa than it would be recognizable as Riverside. Sure, yeah, and we often kind of look at these mm -hmm. uh, mammoths as sort of these big, hairy, scary creatures, mm -hmm. but it's almost elephant-like, you were saying. They, yeah, because uh, 
there weren't glaciers. It wasn't really yeah. that cold. So these were non-woolly mammoths. These would look just like African elephants. Interesting. Um, and lived like African elephants. They had family groups. Um, they probably did migrations around the area. We know um, from where they're found that they live in a variety of habitats. So in coastal grasslands, uh, chaparral, uh, even forest edges and, and along the uh, margins of the deserts. Uh, and they were very um, ecologically flexible and, wow. and did pretty well up until about uh, 12,000 years ago when we have this big event that caused the extinction of that megafauna. Mm, and that big event was? That's the big question. So was it climate change? Uh, it also is about the time that we see um, migration of native people from Asia into North America. Um, and so there had been a, a long uh, lived hypothesis that maybe these hunters uh, overhunted the, ma the mammoths and the mastodon. Um, we know that they did feed on them because there are a number of archaeological sites where we find uh, arrowheads and butchery marks on the bones. So we know that uh, a lot of the, the early native peoples that came here hunted them. But did they hunt them so intensely that they went extinct? That's a, a center of debate that is currently raging. <laughs> Interesting. And where was this found in Riverside? This was found in the, the uh, Campbell Sand Pit, which was a, a commercial sand quarry in the Santa Ana River Basin. Hmm. And so we can actually see here, this has a little bit of um, wear from being tumbled. Uh, so it was um, uh, probably washed downstream. There's no other uh, teeth or bones found with it. So it probably had eroded out of an older skeleton and wash downstream. Okay. Uh, and most of the fossils that are found in the Santa Ana River are these uh, individual pieces that had been disarticulated and disassociated from a, an original animal that had died and these pieces are now sort of being washed down the stream. And Now are there any other facts you'd like to share with anyone watching in the vault? Um, well even though they lived like African elephants um, they were more closely related to the Asian elephants which kind of makes sense when you figure out how they got here. So they didn't really evolve in North America. They came over from uh, Northeastern Asia across a land bridge. So when the Ice Age started, the Ice Ages, there were a number of these um, three or so million years ago, most of the water on the earth was locked up into these glaciers that sometimes were almost a mile thick. That means that the ocean level actually subsided to the point where there were now connections between um, Asia and North America. So they were called land bridges. And so these land bridges were the avenue by which mammoths came over from Asia into North America. Hmm, and it's also the, the route that we see um, native peoples or the progenitors of native people coming from Asia into North America. Sure, wow. Well, thank you, Douglas, so much. It was thank very you. fascinating to learn everything. And thank you for watching mm -hmm. another episode of In the Vault.